Over the last month or so, I've been doing this little experiment on neck training after I saw this podcast clip from Tim Ferriss and Dr. Andrew Huber. A strong neck, why is that so important? Well, it's important because you want a strong spine and it's the upper portion of your spine. Now the benefits from neck training sounded great and I have heard about this in the past. My only real experience with neck training has been what I've seen through the martial arts community like at my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym and my Thai boxing gym. A lot of the higher level competitors do this a lot. For Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it actually helps you like withstand chokes and avoid neck injuries because your, your neck's getting cranked on so often. And in Thai boxing it's great for injury prevention and actually helping you absorb and soak punches better. So I've seen a couple people do neck training in the past but I've never actually tried it myself until this period. And on top of that I heard it can kind of like round you out aesthetically like if you have super broad shoulders and a tiny neck it can look funny and it can maybe even like sharpen up your jawline make you look more attractive which I don't think anybody would be upset about those benefits so on top of what Huberman and Tim Ferriss talked about like the increased posture confidence blood flow to the brain uh, spinal strength injury prevention like this sounded like something I just had to do so in this video I'll tell you what I did and then some of the results I noticed after training neck for about four weeks so one of the biggest barriers to neck training is how do you actually do it like what do you do to train the neck and in the podcast Huberman talks about how he usually just takes a, a plate puts it on his forehead side of the head or back of the head and does crunches one way or the other on a bench. And Tim Ferriss talked about how he uses a four-way neck machine. And the way I do it is take a plate, wrap it in a towel so you don't end up with an imprint of the, the weight <laughs> number on your forehead. And I usually lie on my side and I'll do it somewhere in the 10 to 15 repetition range. I'll usually do one light warm-up and then three work sets. How do you hold it on your head? You just, just rest just, it there. Just, yeah, just, just hold hand. it with your hand okay. on your side. It also works your obliques somewhat. You're on a bench or on, on the ground? bench. I bought a four-way neck machine on Amazon for 350 bucks. I was like, you know what? Let me try this before spending like mm -hmm. five grand. Works great. Yeah. And on top of that, my uh, MMA client, Andy, once said he saw this MMA maniac doing um, what he calls towel biting neck crunches. So you take a towel and, uh, and I sh I'll show you this later in the video because I actually do it. So you take a towel and you thread it through a kettlebell or a plate with like a, a handle hole and you bite it. And then you, you just basically wrench your neck like this. And uh, Andy said he once saw a guy doing this with like 60, 70 pounds, just cranking his neck just like an animal. And he was only like 130 pounds, just built like a warrior. So what I did during this period was I did the, the towel biting neck crunches and then plate crunches on bench for the, the front and the sides. And one thing I'll mention like, this isn't a popular thing to do at commercial gyms. So if you're worried about like what people think of you, maybe don't do the towel biting neck crunch at a Planet Fitness or a commercial gym, unless you wanna make people nervous and get some looks cause it, it looks and feels kind of crazy, but, uh, but the results and the pump that you'll get are, are quite awesome. So uh, if you can find a way to do it, I would recommend giving it a shot. So here's some clips of what I was doing. This is me doing the towel biting neck crunch first. I was using about 35 pounds here. I went up to about 45 for the heaviest sets I did during this time. Uh, I did start at 25. I would recommend starting at actually like 10 or 20 if you've never done this before or if you don't have any, any kind of upper back or neck strength base because it's really quite active and I can I didn't hurt myself, but I can see how that's possible. So um, just, just proceed with caution here because I assume that neck kinks are entirely possible while doing this. Here's me doing some plate crunches on the bench for the, the front and the side. I tried to get a really good stretch here, especially in the front. Uh, the sides just felt a little bit riskier. So I would recommend going a little bit lighter on the sides uh, if you're gonna do this again and just really focus on form and posture because neck kinks aren't fun. I assume pretty much everybody's experienced them at one point or another, just annoying. And then next thing you know, you can't turn your head one way for a week. So to avoid that, I'd probably recommend going light on the, the side, but you can kind of go front and back quite heavy. Like those felt really stable and strong, but yeah, proceed with caution, proceed at your own pace. Now for the results, there's three things that I noticed during this time. And these are actually the reasons I'm gonna kind of continue neck training into the future. The first was my spine definitely felt stronger, not just my actual neck, but my whole upper back, probably like mid back up and even, even lower back a little bit, just felt stronger and more, more stable. And feeling a strong spine might not make a lot of sense, but I almost think the results were like subconscious level. Like I just felt a little bit more sure of myself day to day, like like in the freak off chance that an attacker flies in or you get in a car crash or something crazy happens, like your neck is just holding your head on your body together, which is the most important attachment in your whole body. And I think subconsciously your body just knows that. And I just felt a little bit more self-assured and a little, just a little bit more confident and like secure in my, in my spine and my posture, just walking around day to day. If you try this out, you'll know what I mean, but uh, just this whole connection felt more sturdy and I, and I felt it carry over into other areas of life that I just felt a little bit more self-assured, more so than you do. Like if you just train your, your chest or your arms, like I never noticed this before and I've been training the rest of my body my whole life essentially. But um, yeah, this neck attachment training, it, 
it just gives you a kind of a, a sense of sturdiness and self-assuredness that I've never noticed with training another muscle group before. The second thing I noticed was increased confidence and posture. And I think those two are completely related. Like if you just hold better posture, you're gonna have more confidence than if you, you walk around hunchback, like looking over like this, like your physiology definitely impacts your, like how you think of yourself and your confidence level. So I think it definitely helped with standing more upright and kind of, and I would say increased confidence and self-assuredness comes off the back of that. And the biggest place I noticed this was in squaring up and tie boxing. So in martial arts, like when I'm actually going up against another guy who's swinging at my head. There was definitely a noticeable difference here in confidence and posture that I carried during my martial arts training during this time. I think just because my body knew that I was more equipped to handle and soak a punch when it was inevitably gonna to come towards my face. And then in regular life, when you're not squaring up to someone who wants to take your head off, I, I did notice that I was standing a little bit more upright and it was a little easier to look people in the eye. I don't think I'm too aware of my posture normally, but I, I definitely think that I just naturally, without trying, without needing any mental cues, just, just stood up a little bit more upright and I, and I thought that was kind of cool too. The third result, the, the last thing I want to talk about was the actual aesthetics. Like what did it look like before and after? And one thing that Huberman talked about in the podcast was that guys with like broad shoulders and a really well-developed upper body, they look kind of goofy when they have skinny necks. Yeah. You know, one of the things that looks ridiculous and frankly is ridiculous, you see these guys with big delts, wide shoulders, you know, long clavicles and their head is placed on this little neck. A popsicle on a stick. Well, and they look especially <laughs> ridiculous. There's no other word for it yeah. in street clothes. And I think I fell into this group a little bit because after training the neck, I think I just looked a little bit more well-rounded. Like, like I've been training my upper back, shoulders, chest for years, and I think I'm pretty well developed in that area. But proportionally, I think my neck was a little bit lacking. So I think after doing this neck training for a little bit, it helped kind of round out my whole, kind of helped round out my whole body look. And I think my neck now is, closer in proportion to the rest of my body, strength-wise, size-wise, aesthetic-wise, everything. So I think aesthetically, like it was it was a win there. Like I don't have a big puffy neck and I don't think you're gonna get one if you do neck training for two months. But, it's, but if you've never done it before, it might just help round you out and look a little better if, you're, if you care about that. So yeah, that's what I learned about neck training over the last month. I'm definitely gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep implementing it into my routine, especially as long as I do martial arts. I'll probably just do once or twice a week. Uh, two, three sets during those sessions. Nothing like crazy. Like it's not going to be the, the core part of my workouts, but it's definitely an accessory that I want to, I want to keep in there and keep improving on to, to just be the most functional and best physical specimen I can be. But yeah, if you've never tried this before, it, I think it's worth giving it a shot. If you try the towel biting neck crunch or you, you do come back to this video and leave a comment because I'm curious like what, what you think of it and uh, what, what your results are. Cause I mean, it really lights up the whole face and the back of the neck and it's a, I don't know, it's a pretty cool movement. Like you can kind of just, just feel like the, like the growth hormone and everything like pump it through your face. So uh, if you try that one out, definitely leave a comment because I'm curious what you guys think. Thanks for watching. If your lower back's a problem, uh, check out my products in the description or just check out my other videos for free and we'll see you in the next one.